Father, we're so thankful today, Father, to be in your presence, Lord. And we just say that we love you, Lord Jesus. Father, we magnify your name, Lord. For you are more than worthy. You're more than worthy to be praised, Father God. Lord Jesus, you make it possible.
I just want to say thank you. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. You are our God, Almighty, the creator of heaven and the earth. And all things that exist We understand this morning that all glory, all honor, and all praise belong to you. And we lift it up, Father, in our hearts this morning. And we thank you, dear God, for your word reminds us now is the hour, now is the time. And God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, Father, this morning, we just want to fall before you. We just want to bless your name and just say how much we appreciate your grace. You're exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Thank you for your greatness. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for breakthrough. Our loved ones all over, wherever they're tuning in to, Father, we stretch forth our faith towards them as well. And we ask, Father God, that you bring forth your virtue and touch every one of our loved ones, those that are connected to us, those that are allies with us, those that are friends with us. You have called us together as Ohana, one family. We are united in your presence because in your presence there is peace. And we just want to bless your name all over the media, all over the television, all over the programs, wherever you are. Just, just release yourself to the power of God's presence. He's there. You need that refreshing? He's there. You need that renewing? He's there. You need that added strength? He's there. You need that uplifting this morning? He's there. He said, I never leave you. Neither will I forsake you. I will be with you always until the very ends of the earth. Come on, Judah. Sing. You are
Come on, just bless it. Lift your hands, just bless it. Bless it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Somebody give God praise in advance. Somebody watching the program this morning, don't think about who's there. Don't worry about what the situations may be, what is right now at that moment. You're serving and worshiping a living God, a God that hears, a God that answers, a God that works on your behalf. Even when you can't see it, even when you can feel it, even when there's no results about it, our God works through impossibilities and makes it possible. That's the God we serve. That's the God we praise. That's the God we worship. He's exceedingly, He's above above all that we ask or we think. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the praise. Come on, let's lift him up. Come on, let's lift him up. Give him glory. Give him praise. Shout it out. Nothing is impossible. Shout it! 
good. Just go ahead and thank him in advance for it. Somebody praise him. Your prayers have already been answered. Give him glory. Thank him in advance. That's how the Spirit of God operates. Just bless him. Glorify him. Magnify him. He deserves the highest praise. There's nothing like you, Lord. Nothing like you. There's no one else like you. Give you glory, praise, and honor. Thank you, Father. Father, we begin to pray. We begin to thank. We begin to bless. There's an anointing that is flowing from heaven to earth. There's an anointing that right now is lifting burdens. Destroying yokes, casting out demon spirits in the name of Jesus. The blood of the Lamb came forth to bring deliverance to God's people. Let healing already begin. Let virtue begin. Let a sound mind continue to begin. Let a fresh start. A new life of salvation take place within the being right now that is receiving this. In the last days, your word says and prophesied in the book of Joel, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And the sons and daughters will prophesy. We thank you, Father God, for what has been done right now. And we declare it. We give you praise. We magnify and glorify. We lift up the name and the only name, the lily in the valley, the bright and morning star. There is no one like you, Father. We thank you for your son. We thank you for the plan that you have given. We thank you, Lord, for Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans, I know the thoughts that I have for you, said the Lord. Father God, we honor you this morning. Exceedingly above all that we ask. For nothing is impossible. You're a possible God. You can mend the broken bones and you can repair the sinews, Father. Blood vessels can flow with the blood of Jesus. Cleanse and purify the blood. Thank you, Father, for our health in our lungs, in our breathing components, Genesis 2, 7. And God formed man out of the dust of the earth and he bred into man's nostrils and man became a living breath that we breathe comes from you, Father. We give you glory this morning. We give you honor this morning. We want to say thank you for bringing deliverance to all of our loved ones here in our city, in the city of Waianae, a place that they said that it's one of the worst spots on the island. But there's an anointing in this place there's a powerful anointing of God's spirit that will break the backs of the devil in Jesus name and father in advance we praise you for victory or victory already thank you for your perfect gift thank you for your grace we love you this morning we just want to say thank you Thank you, thank you for the blood of Jesus. When that blood came flowing off of the cross, it brought deliverance to this entire world. For those who believe will receive. And Father, that, that's what we want to do this morning. Just say thank you for all that you have done and all that you are. So now we're going to receive the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
we are counted as a privilege this morning. We are partakers of Christ's suffering as well as his resurrection of eternal life inside of us. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your love. There's no one like you. Thank you, Lord. We remember the scriptures this morning as it teaches us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 3. Jesus said this to the disciples, and, and you know the scriptures as it goes down, but it goes down to verse 28, and it says, Let a man examine himself. Before we receive the body and the blood, Let's take it personal to every individual. Let's make this a personal prayer. Whatever thought, whatever feeling, whatever action may have taken place, we can ask God to forgive us. That he may cleanse and wash us. That we may be counted worthy to receive it. Verses below talks about judgment. It is better that a man judges himself. He is better off. So as we go forward, the Bible tells us, judge not, that ye be not judged. But this is the greatest gift of all. God sends his love towards those who will receive it. Love covers a multitude of error, of fault, of trespass, of sin, of failure. And when we have accepted what the word of God says, now, when we receive the body and blood, we may accept it and receive it and become partakers of Christ's suffering, but as well as his resurrection and eternal life in Jesus Christ. So as we receive the body this morning, let's lift it up. Father, we lift up the body. We lift up the blood. And we ask, Father God, that as we are partakers of Christ's suffering, as well as his resur resurrection and e of eternal life inside of us, we ask, Father, that you pardon our error. Forgive us of our shortcomings, that as we receive this, we may be counted worthy. Thank you for the opportunity and the privilege. We lift this up before you and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. And the body said, Amen. You may receive the body that was broken on the first day, but made whole and complete on the third. Then as we are about to receive the blood, the blood now washes away our sin. The body that we took is what brings health to our body physically. But the blood washes away our sin, our shame may be forgiven of our error. Father, we thank you once more as we receive this body. Cleanse, purify, sanctify us that we may stay and remain in union with you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may receive now. Once more, Father, we want to give you the highest praise. No, no, Judah, you can help me with there's no one like you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Jesus, there's no one like you in all the earth. There's no one like you.
Thank you, Father God, for all that have been done, are being done. And we thank you for what you're about to do in the lives of the believers. 
we thank you father for those who does not or have not accepted you as their comforter as their deliverer as their personal lord and savior we pray today that they will have this revelation to receive jesus christ and lord to be evermore forgiven of their error and sin we press forward onward and upward in the mighty name of jesus and all the saints of god said amen hallelujah god bless you god bless you you can air five someone beside you let somebody know that jesus is lord hallelujah Hallelujah. We greet you in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. You made it in. Please look at someone. I know they may not be as close as you would want them to be. But tell someone right beside you, you made it in to the presence of the king. Do you know it's a joy to be in the house of the Lord? To my son, Pastor J. Jr. Kanani, and all the kids back there, Brother Lance and the Whitney families, Sister Mona, Jimbo, all of our loved ones back there, and then to all of our families in the Philippines and in Canada and Carolinas, and then throughout, we bid you aloha to all of our families that are on our program continuously. Thank you for being a support to the house that we continue to give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We love you. Thank you for being a part of Tap In and Not Out this morning. I believe that God has done great and mighty things. He's an awesome God. Can we give God a big clap offering? Again, thank you for your prayers for Pastor Jerry and myself. And, and as we do our travels and enjoy ourselves, just being a part of God's beautiful and wonderful creation. My grandson all the way in Colorado as well. And then to all of our loved ones here in the city of Waianae, to the state of Hawaii, and then to all of our Hawaiian islands, and then in our nation. God is good. God is alive. He hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, He's the same today, and he's the same forevermore. Can I get a witness, somebody? This past several weeks, I've been talking about to find, find courage and pursue. Find courage and pursue. Now, you're going to have to get ready. I, I don't want you to buckle up on your seats. I want you to be just ready to run. Because God will out outline a few things that the enemy has disguised himself in many areas or many facets. And the word of God says, whatsoever is hidden in the dark shall be... Come on, somebody. That's the truth of God's word. Jesus Christ is the Messiah, and he is the only Messiah. There is none other before him. There is none other, none other presence. There will be none other after him. He is the son of the living God. I identify it through experience in my own life. I'm grateful that what God has done, he's still doing. But he's doing greater things now. Somebody say greater things. We don't want to still be in the same level that we used to be. We want to grow and, and then mature and then graduate from one level to another level and keep on going. You're going to have to stay with me this morning because the Spirit of God has been downloading uh, uh, some important things for you and I to survive in this day and in this hour and in this time. We're going to talk about spirits. We're going to talk about demonic spirits. We're going to talk about where it came from and why it's here. 
And if you're standing upon the word of God, you will be able, not just with your physical eyes, but with your spiritual eyes, to identify the works of the devil and take authority and reprove that spirit. Rebuke that spirit. Annul that spirit. Cancel that spirit. Command that spirit even before it tries to sneak into your house. Even before it tries to come within your presence. God has given you and I the power and authority and all those that are connected to our program this morning. I like to say to you, don't let any distractions hinder you this morning. Because the Spirit of God will reveal a few powerful things that we need to know. We're, we're going to, I'm going to reverse just, or, or rewind, should I say, maybe for a better word, and go back to Joshua chapter 10. And in Joshua chapter 10, we're going to probably pick it up from verse 3, but I'm going to jump all the way verse down to uh, verse 25. And to gather a little bit more information, you might want to read Joshua chapter 9. And it's going to talk about the Hittite spirits. Now, many a times when we talk about the Ites or the Hittites, the Amorites, the Amalekites, the Gergeshites, the Perizzites, don't forget here in Waianae we have a lot of... Oh, okay. We're remodeling our houses to get those things out. But that's not the house that I'm referring to. The house that I'm referring to is you. You and me. The enemy wants to hide itself. And there were five kings as we've studied previously. I don't want to take too much time there because... There's a lot for us to study where we are today. But if you don't identify these spirits, these spirits can easily creep in without your knowledge and begin to eat you up. And you think that you're just dealing with frustration or you're dealing with this COVID-19 situation. I'd just like to say this to you and I. Don't settle for nothing less but for God's best. Because God is doing something great in your life and in my life. And in this time that we, you and I are living, the attack is more to the believer. Not to the unbeliever. Because the unbeliever, unbeliever, the Bible says, if a person is John 3, 3, except a man be born again, he will never experience the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, except a man be born again. So you must be born again. If you're watching the program just to be entertained, then you might as well turn the station, but don't touch the dial. You need to know who you are and authority, the authority that you now carry because your life has been given to Christ Jesus. So I'm going to talk about this spirit. Are you ready? Did you come this morning excited to receive something from God? I'd like to give a shout out to Kulamore participants and all of our loved ones that have participated with that yesterday. What an awesome time. Thank you. For all of our supporters, even over the media, thank you very much. God is doing something great. I believe in the power of his word. And it doesn't take one person. It takes a bunch of people to come together, organize their spirit together, and continue to pursue forward in Jesus' name. So get ready, get ready, get ready. I'd like to go back to Joshua. I, I was I did say verse 25, but I'd like to go back to Joshua chapter 10, verse 22. Try to go quick a little bit forward there.
I'm reading from the NLT translation. So as we remembered, chapter 9 talks about the ite spirit, the Hittites, and how they begin to gather these five kings from the Amorites, the Jebusites, the Gergesites, and they begin to come together so that they can attack one nation. But because this one nation called the Gibeonites came under the covering of the Israelites, they became allies. And what that means to you and I means if our family members or those that are connected to us, it could also be neighbors, co-workers, friends. But if they become an ally to you, in other words, if they're coming where you can speak life inside of them and they're receiving, then the blood covering that is over you will also trickle upon them. So the Gibeonites was covered because there was a, uh, an attempt there was a, a commitment, there was an oath, there was a covenant made so the Israelites could not slaughter the Gideonites. So what happened with the Hittites, the Hebites, Gergeshites, Amorites, they came together, these five kings, as I spoke about it earlier, previously, and they were trying to ambush the Gideonites. This is where the body of Christ come together and the Bible says, any two in agreement, touching one thing here on earth, our Father which is in heaven shall give it to you and I. This is where we come in a power of agreement and we begin to break the strongholds off of our families, off of our friends, off of our co-workers, and off of those that are connected to you and I because we are one in Christ Jesus. So when they came to come against the Gibeonites and the Israelites, Joshua commanded, because God gave him the authority to slaughter them, kill them all. They chased them. And they began to annihilate all. But these five kings, in other words, these five rulers of these uh, uh, armies, they got away and they snuck into a cave. They hid in a cave. And when Joshua found out the information, he says, cover that cave with stones. Don't let them get out. Let's take care of what we need to do right now with these armies. Annihilate them. And when God tells us to go back and deal with them, we will. God did. They took care of all the matter with these armies. And now they come back and are now dealing with the five kings. You with me so far? You've been listening to the message last week and so forth. So, verse 22, then Joshua said, remove the rocks. Covering the opening of the cave and bring the five kings to me. So they brought the five kings out of the cave. The kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jermoth, Lachish, and Eglon. Note, they were revealed. Whatever is hidden in the dark shall be revealed in the light. Amen. Verse 24, when they brought them out, Joshua told the commanders of the Israelite army. He says, come now to these five kings. He says to the Israelite commanders, you commanders come. And look at what verse 24 says. Help me read it. He says, come and do what? Put your feet upon their what? Anything that is pressed there upon the neck would stop the breath of life. It will cut off oxygen. So this is what Joshua began to tell them. Put your feet on a king's neck. We're talking about the Israelite commanders, the Israelite army. We're talking about God's people and those that have understood who, God's, who God is and authority that God has now given to Joshua and the Israelites. Now you remember who the Israelites are. The Israelites are God's firstborn. And if you are born again, somebody shout because you are an Israelite. You, you are an Israelite. I'm, I'm born again. I'm God's firstborn. 
Now I become an, a citizen of heaven. I become an heir to the kingdom and joint heir through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know who I am. You cannot tell me that I'm who I'm not. I know who I am. Do know, you know who you are? You won't let man's words or man's thoughts or man's opinions, man's suggestions, man's theories begin to change your character. No, this is what the word says. He says to Joshua, get your commanders of Israelite and put those kings down on their neck, on their head. And I want every one of you commanders to put your feet. Somebody lift up your right leg, the other right leg. And just press. Just step on. Now, I'd like to say this to someone this morning. Today, we're not playing games. We're not playing games. We don't have any time to be playing games. You either in or you out. You're either walking in the faith and in the word of God or you're not. You're either a born again believer or you're just a Christian. And in this world today, let me tell you, the last target of the enemy will attack all sorts of religions. I'll be teaching you about that soon. All the attacks that in these last days will attack religion. Listen, I'm not a religious person. I ha I'm a person that have a relationship with Christ. So if you're looking for a religious person, don't look at me. I might not fit the apparel. I might not look the position. I might not look at as a, a, an apostle or a pastor or a mentor or a teacher, but I know in the eyes of God, I look at, when he looks at me, he says, that's my son. That's my son. When he looks at you, that's what he's saying. That's my son. That's my daughter. Now, now let's take the, the agenda away. When he says son, that means you are prepared, armed, and ready to fight and defend who you are. I'm a child of the Most High God. God isn't looking at women as a, a, a gender, just as a gender. He's looking at you women as sons. In other words, you are being matured following the instructions of your father. I don't know how far we're going to get with this message this morning. I thought we we're going to wrap it up, but I don't know where we're going to go. I'm just following the lead of the Holy Spirit. Because after we got done yesterday, boy, I tell you, I said, Lord, I cannot go rest for a little while. And he says, no. Just keep going. Then I found myself almost 11 at night. And Lord, can I? he says, no, just keep going. And finally, when I chance, had a chance to get some rest, he wakes me up an hour and a half after. But the times that he's allowing me to study and find out what he wants to say to me is because he's imparting and in impacting the church, the body of Christ. You're going to hear fair, several key words that you and I get challenged every single day. And we never want to make that right decision or that certain decision because we are Afraid if we confess it, that might bring an attack to me. I might bring an attack to my spouse. It might bring an attack to my family. But you need to stand on the word of God and confess what the word of God says. Know that the word of God gives you that assurance and that confidence to press on and go forward in Jesus' name. We're moving forward, onward, and where? Upward. We're moving So they did that to the kings. Now note, this is exactly how we need to take every spirit that the enemy assigns to us and take authority over it in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, body of Christ, don't think for a moment that there's no assignment against you. As long as the truth resides inside of you, 
there is an assignment against you. The devil wants to stop you from com continuing to uh, produce in your assignment. And your assignment is to testify of God's goodness. Your assignment is to proclaim and declare who Jesus Christ is in and through your life. You have a testimony of God's goodness, of God's greatness, of who God is and all that he's done. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. So we need to testify about who God is in our life. Your testimony. And we cover that testimony as well with the blood of Jesus. The devil never wants you to testify. Now let me go down to verse 25. This is what Joshua says to all the Israelites and to their allies, the Gibeonites. He says, don't ever be afraid or discouraged. How many of you see that? He says, don't ever, not for a moment, not for a second, not for a minute, not for an hour, not for a day, a week, a month, or a year. Don't ever. This is God's word to Joshua to the Israelites and the Gibeonites. Help me read it. It says, don't ever be afraid or discouraged. Be what? Strong and what? Courageous, for the Lord is going to do this to all. Somebody shout, all. Not one, not two, not three, not all the attacks that you've been having. God will destroy all once and for all. He's going to annihilate them. He's going to destroy them. He's going to take them out. And never before and never again will you see them. God is going to destroy all of them. Hmm. Then Joshua killed each of the five kings. He killed them. This was God's word. This was God's authority killed each of the five kings and um, impaled them on five sharpened poles where they hung until evening. See, it, it's not so much in the physical. We're talking about using the word of God that gives us power and authority over the works of the enemy. You and I can't kill them without the sword of the spirit. It's the word of God that will combat the works of the enemy. But you and I are going to have to show up. Come on, tell somebody right beside you, you got to show up. It's good to do the mission. It's good to do the work. It's good to be a part of what God's gospel is all about. But if you never show up, who's going to do it? Nobody's going to do it. We can talk about it. We can praise and clap about it. We can sing about it. But if you're not present, how can God do the work through you? He wants to work through you. Tell somebody, he wants to work through you. So as the sun was going down, Joshua gave instructions for the bodies of the kings to take down from the poles and throw them where? Throw them where? He was instructing the Israelites, take them now off the poles. But it actually said the sharp poles. There is no other weapon sharper than the word of God, the two-edged sword. Take them off and then throw them where? Help me. Back into the cave where they were hiding. When we rebuke the devil, we send that spirit back to where it came from. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus. Now, you're going to have to get a little bit vocal with me because... This is where we defeat the works of the enemy. If you never confess it, then you can never profess it. So you can never possess it. You have to confess it. Speak the word of truth. Speak the word of life. Speak life and not death. Speak healing in Jesus' name and not sickness. I declare it today. I continue to confess it, to profess it, to possess it. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give God a big clap offering. After they threw him in a cave 
where they were hiding. Then they covered the opening of the cave with a pile of large rocks, which remains to this very day. We're going to move now. And we're going to be, begin to uncover some of these things that we may have been entertaining or may have been in a presence or may have been struggling with and not knowing what these things are. And for those of you that are watching the program or the telecast this morning, you're not here by chance. You're here by God's divine purpose and calling in your life. I would encourage you to get the notes. I would encourage you to watch the program again and get these key elements that will bring deliverance in your life, will bring deliverance in your family, will bring deliverance in all those that are allies with you. For the devil in the last days will not fight fair. If he can take you out, he'll take you out immediately. Why? Because you are a prophetic channel of the word of God. And the enemy knows that. And the enemy knows that any prophetic channel of the word of God, the truth of God, he will try in every way to shut you down. So now we're going to deal with this spirit. Now, before I go here, there was a revelation on last week's message where God allowed Joshua's prayer to be evident. God, Joshua asked God to stop the moon from shining, the sun from shining, keep it in one place. Did you get that revelation last week? We would never ever heard it before, never ever talked about it before, and the Spirit of God began to bring forth a revelation that the same thing that took place in the Old Testament, Joshua's time, took place in the New Testament. Anybody caught that? It was a mind blow when the Spirit of God downloaded that. I was like, my gosh, I've never seen this before. And God stopped the sun from shining. And when he stopped the sun from shining, what he did was he revealed the sinful nature that tried to corrupt God's creation. Did you know that? All these sinful things begin to come into revelation. And the Bible says now at the 3 o'clock hour, Jesus gave up the ghost. In other words, he died and his blood was shed. And that's what abolished every sin of man. And this is why a man can be born again. You don't have to bring your past with you. Now as being born again, 1 Corinthians 7, uh, um, help me with that, 7, 5, I believe. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are what? That word past means it's dead. It's gone. So now you don't have a past, so you don't have to worry about your past. Well, you know, people start talking. Don't listen to what people start talking about you. Just put the... All right. Put the shut to the up. And if that doesn't work, you can shut them up anyway. But anyhow, God is doing something great in our lives. So the sun was going down. Joshua gave instructions. Throw these kings now, these dead kings. We've killed them. Okay, here we go. Hittite. Hittite means... Sons of terror. Let me say that again. The name or the word Hittites means sons of terror. The Hittites were descendants of Heth, whose name means terror. The word terror refers to an extreme manifestation of fear. I'll try to break it down as, as I go. The word terror refers to an extreme manifestation of fear. So if the devil wants to attack you, he attacks you in your mind using a spirit of fear. Now we know that fear, false evidence that appears real, seems to be real, but it's, it's false. So it seems as though when the enemy wants to attack you, he attacks you with a terror 
of fear. Now, the word terror also comes from the word terrorist. What happened to 9-11? When the terrorists hit New York City, the Twin Towers. Never before it happened. Never before it happened in our time. Never before. The president at that time was George Bush Jr., I believe. And he said, this will not cripple our nation. But his words didn't hold right because it sure did cripple our nation. He said, we're going to find him and annihilate him and all those followers. We never found him till the next president came in office 11 years after. Why? Because where was he? Excuse me? He was hiding in caves. He was hiding in a dark place. See, the devil knows where to hide because he never wants to be revealed and found out. And when he's not revealed and find out, he can attack you with arrows that you can never see what area he's coming from. The devil is a liar. Excuse me this morning. I'm a little bit pumped up. Because I'm angry at the devil. I'm angry at his schemes, his schisms, his deceits, his lies. His assignments, his allegations, false allegations. And I say it to the church and the body of Christ this morning. It's time to stop playing games. Mean business with God. And know the devil is real. And know that he does, just doesn't want to play around as imps around your families and, and your spouse and, and your job and your finances and the things around your home. Know that the devil is trying to take you out because you are a prophetic voice to the kingdom of heaven. I know it's a little bit tough this morning, but if you bear with me and hang out with me, you get deliverance and nothing will stop you you will be like a locomotive. You will go forward. You will break down every force of a demonic attack. Today, it's not hiding anymore. These demon spirits are coming out. They're revealing who they are. And the word of God is what gives you and I the power to overcome and remain victorious. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hittite spirits of terror are still operators that attack the emotions and are the spirits behind nightmares and non-rational phobias such as claustrophobia, agoraphobia, means, it means exaggerated fear of animals or like dogs, of fear of of being in the dark. Anybody find that a phobia to be afraid of the dark? Today you don't need to worry because your phone has light. So you press your phone and then you... As soon as something that you're not able to recognize or identify you, puiva, you jump. Well, before you go walk in the darkness, cover yourself from head to toe with the blood of the Lamb. Call the angels to encamp in charge around you. And break down every assignment that tries to come even before it shows up. You plead the blood of Jesus against it. We're giving you weapons of defeat against the enemy. Come on, body of Christ. You got to identify the weapons that God has given to you and I. The strategies to overcome the works of the enemy because he doesn't play fair. Okay. Now, you know what claustrophobia means. Uh, I don't want to say I'm a claustrophobic person. I don't want to be confined in an area that I cannot move. But you know, God is so good. You know, even under those conditions, we just pray. God, we, we thank you. 
because you allow favor to work on our behalf. And as a son of the king, I give you praise no matter where I am. And I thank you that you will help me through every situation, every situation. Talks about agoraphobias or a phobia type of person or place. Acrophobia or agoraphobia talks about a person that does not want to be in public crowds. Maybe you go to a stadium and you cannot handle people being brought up in a country. You, you know, you never want, the only time we go to town is when we go to Alamoana Center for Christmas. If we go look at the reindeers. Some of you have no idea what I'm saying. 70 and above. Uh, let's try 40. Parents used to take us out, go look the reindeers at, at Alamoana Center. Some of you remember that? I can see some of you jumping over television. You jump, you, yeah, that was us. But being in a country, you're not so much around the crowds. And you get used to it, that. And some people, now we take them to town and something, and they look around like, wow, I never know how he was like this. Cousin, you've been in the boonies too long. You grew up in the sticks too long. So these phobias start to happen. Anyone who has suffered from a phobia can testify that terror produces a sense of deep emotion or despair and torment and causes a desire not to live anymore. Watch this. This Hittite spirit, therefore, are also behind suicides. I'm talking about the same spirit that deals with the phobias. Uh, maybe I was going to mention arachnophobia. But some of us just jump thinking about those spiders. Oh, was it a spider or a snake? Yeah. What happened to the snake? We cut them off. We cut the head off anyway. Huh? <laughs> These spirits are also behind suicides. A anybody hearing this? Do you know that the racial and the number and account of suicides is at its highest rates today? All across America. People cannot handle what's happening around you and I because we're dealing with COVID. We're dealing with high numbers of situations and deaths. We're dealing with sickness and all kinds of stuff that is happening. People cannot handle that. So they allow this spirit of these phobias to take place inside of them and they feel that they have no sense of living. So they take their own life. Somebody shout, the devil is a liar. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. God is the giver of life, and when he is ready to call you home, then God will do it. But don't let the enemy in any sort. If you are undergoing deep emotional despair and suicidal thoughts are haunting you, you are being attacked by a Hittite spirit. Let me read that one more time. If you are undergoing deep emotional despair, despair and suicidal thoughts are haunting you, you are being attacked by Hittite spirits. When you understand what the Hittite spirit does, how it works in a person or in a group of people, then we can start the process of resisting their strongholds on you and I, if you understand it. And then conquer these spirits like God told us already to do. God told you and I to do it. 
conquer these spirits, overcome these spirits. We are citizens of heaven, and then we are ambassadors of Christ. Somebody say that, I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm an ambassador now of Christ. So now, now that you are, you've identified that, you've confessed it, professed it, so you can possess it, you need to stand confident and assured. Pull your shoulders back. Lift your head up high. Declare and be determined. I will not settle for anything less but for God's best. Hmm. Now you can start the process of resisting the strongholds against, of the enemy against us. And then you can conquer them like God told us. We are learning how these spirit forces operate and how to deal with them. We're not learning really how to cast out a demon. Somebody hear this now. We talk about casting out demon spirits, annihilating them, annul them, demanding, rebuking. We understand that. Everybody understand that? Okay, now we're going to another level. We're going further. but more along the lines of understanding how these spirits behave. You need to identify how these spirits behave. So we can discern more easily why and in whom these forces are operating. The sad thing is, these spirits tend to operate within the church. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now we're not talking about warring these things outside of the house of God. We're talking about these things sneaking into the house of God. We're talking about these spirits, and then more so, if you're not spiritually minded, you cannot identify these spirits. Mm. Okay, it's getting better as we go. Is everybody okay? We have to remember that we do not battle against the flesh, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, of this world. If we go to Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10, down to verse 18, we'll find out what it says to put on what? The whole armor. Somebody said, put on the whole armor. Let me just say this to you. Don't take off your armor. Don't take it off. Don't take it off. We get challenged easily to take it off when we are confronted with situations that around us and demands us to act the way we used to act before in our past no 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 hold on i'm not i'm not living in the past i'm living in the present knowing that now i have the body the armor of christ upon my body i have the helmet of salvation breastplate of righteousness girded with my loins of truth feet shod with the preparation and a gospel of peace having on the shield of Wapa, faith and then doing what the sword of the spirit and the word the sword of the spirit which is the word of god which dwells but then to do what pray pray look at someone smile at them and tell them pray Let's not take prayer for granted. Honey, I'm tired tonight. You can pray for me. Wapa! Okay, now I up. Stop leaning on somebody else's prayer for God to cover you and undergird you. Start praying for yourself. For the prayers of the righteous avails much to the throne room of our Heavenly Father. 
I know that because I need prayer. And I'd like to say thank you for praying for me. Thank you for praying for, for Pastor Jerry. And know that we're praying for you. And let me say that even if the situation doesn't change in your natural eyes, you are a faith person. You are a born-again believer. You're calling things as not as though they were. You're speaking life, healing, and deliverance. You're speaking, speaking breakthrough in the name of Jesus. So as you confess it, profess it, and do what? Possess it. Come on, say it. Confess it. Profess it. And possess it. One more time. Confess it. Profess it. And possess it. If you don't, it's not going to happen. That's how God words, God's word operates. That's how he functions. Through the body of Christ, through the body of believers, through those that are standing upright, or the word righteous, right in the sight of God. God is teaching us these things. We're living in a different stage of life today. This has never happened to planet Earth. 2015 was the Tetrod. Never before in our generation and in our time where the four blood moons was shown and God begins to bring forth signs and wonders when he operates under the blood moon. This was now six, year, six years ago. Look at what happened five years ago when this pandemic struck planet Earth. What happened to the body of believers? The Bible says, Christ will come at the time of one of the signs where is, there is a great apostasy. That word means a falling away of the saints of God. People that give up their faith. People that give up not just a religion, but a relationship with Jesus Christ forevermore. People that turn their backs and go against something that they used to preach. People that give up praying, people that give up stop standing on the word of God and begin to give their ears to fables and genealogies and thoughts and theories of mankind. Stay from such, stay away from people like that. Another translation said, from, from such, run away from people like that. Don't listen to someone who has an eloquent way of speaking the word of God, but has no power and authority. There's no anointing. Don't just listen to someone. There has to be an anointing. If there is no, no anointing, it could be false teaching. Well, what do you mean, Apostle? An anointing that when they're speaking using the word of God or under the power of the Holy Spirit, it starts to enlighten you. It gives you revelation. It brings forth clarity. It begins to reveal a few branches that needs to be cut off from you so you can be pruned and bear more fruit. Is everybody okay? Everybody okay? Those that are watching the Telecaster program, I hope you're fine. These spirits are very real. Their effects on our lives can be devastating. It's so important to know how they operate. As I mentioned, the word Hittite really means sons of Terah. Because they're descendants of Noah's great-grandson, He whose name means terror. Terror refers to an extreme manifestation of fear and is always related to the element of mysteries. You may be afraid of a live wire maybe on the ground because you know that there's electricity or current that can easily zap you. Terror is when you're all when you're walking alone all night and you don't know if someone is going to jump out 
and attack you. Terror is related to the unknown. That's why they said our United States of America has been attacked by terrorists. Because you don't know. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know how they're sneaking up and ready to pounce on you and attack you. They don't want to just hurt you. They don't want to just break a few limbs and put you in, a, in, a, in an emergency care or in some health situation. They're there to destroy you. Is it okay that I've just come on and just tell you like that? That's how serious the message is today. That's how serious it is. The love of God is what genuinely brings forth healing and deliverance. But the Bible also says, whom God loves, he chastises. Parents, if you love your children, then you teach them. Grandparents, you love your grandchildren, then you teach them. I know we want to give them an extra whatever. When the parents are not looking, we sneak them whatever. Or we try to, you know, contain and protect them from getting spanking from their parents. Maybe, I don't know. <clears throat> but at the same time, we still need to address discipline. Am I speaking to the church this morning? We still need to address discipline. Because discipline, if it's not there, the Bible now says, spoil the child and send him to hell. Hmm, that's, that ain't happening. That's not going to happen in my house. They're going to cry. They may cry a little bit now. And you may hurt because you had to correct them. But if you correct them, you give them a chance to make heaven your home, their home. You're giving, you're giving them a chance to live for all eternity, to be with Jesus Christ forevermore. You give them that opportunity, but if you never correct them, if you never teach them, you never discipline them. The Bible says spoil. You know what the word spoil means, actually? To let something rot. Another, there's another phase or definition for spoil that means the extras that is valuable. I know most of us, when we're having a good meal tonight, we like to say, put them in the refrigerator for tomorrow, we can eat them again. You're eating the spoils from tonight. But if you leave them for one week outside, that's what you call spoil, spoil, rotten. Right? You don't want to take... If you study Exodus, you go to Exodus chapter 12, Exodus 13, Exodus 14, when, when the Israelites left Egypt, they left Egypt with all the spoils of Egypt. That means, that means the valuables or the inheritance that was already set aside for the Israelites. That means when God brings deliverance in your life, guess what? You now receive the spoils from God. He begins to doubt. That's why favor isn't fair. Come on, somebody shout it with me. Favor isn't fair. I know Pastor Jay Jr. was watching his message with, with the family. How's it? He brought that message, favor isn't fair. Favor isn't fair. When everybody's standing in the longest line and they look at you and smile and say, Sir, come to the front. Oh, wow, well, I, I got here like 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes after everybody. There was a, Sir, come to the front. Uh, you are, you're talking to me, right? You're the only handsome guy there. Yes, please come forward. Oh, okay, that's me. And they put you and they place you in an area that you dream of. You only dream of. And they place you in that area and say, Sir, this is for you. Enjoy the night. Wow. 
tears would run down my eyes and say, Father, you're a good, good father. I don't even deserve this. But as being your son and your daughter, people would walk for miles if they have to. Father, can you give me a parking? And he says, sure, son, right here. The best parking in the whole entire parking lot. Just set aside for Pastor Jerry and I. Listen, nobody knew we were coming but God. And the place is packed with hundreds of cars. And we're just driving in. Say, oh God, can you give us a parking so we wouldn't have to walk so far? And he gives us the best parking in the whole lot. We're trying to get a hotel, and all the hotels book. And so we're having some breakfast. And who does God send? He sends the manager of the hotel to just come and say good morning. That alone turned out, we didn't know who we were talking to. And upon our last day, she turns to the person at the front counter and says, book them a room for whatever nights they want. Book them a room. Then we look and like, wow, we're talking to the manager of this place. And we didn't even know. How does these things happen? For the eyes of the Lord is upon his people. And his ears are open to their prayers. That's the God we serve. Then they would say, uh, don't, don't go here and don't go there and don't do this and don't do that. Father, are we able? Is this your will for us to proceed further? If he says no, we immediately make a U-turn. But he says continue, for I am with you. Know that I have delivered and bought you favor. And we go there and doors are open wide. It's almost like somebody was, was notified that we were on our way and opens doors towards us. Favor isn't fair. I can continuously tell you about this, but at the same time, I need to tell you the truth. That the enemy is trying to block off God's favor of abundance that runs towards you and I. And it's happening with the Hittite spirits. As I've said earlier, I don't know how far I'm going to go today. I might not be able to continue. But be careful to watch for these spirits. Now here's, here's several keys. How do you watch for these keys? It's not with your natural eyes. It's with the anointing and the gift of discernment inside of you. Every believer that stands upon the word operates under these conditions. There's an anointing upon you. God doesn't want you to struggle to the difficult situations so you know how to present it in God's hands. You know how to leave it in God's hands. Then you know how to trust Him that every good and perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights. Because here's the other key. Praise Him in advance. Praise Him in advance. I don't know what's happening. I don't know how it's happening or where it's coming from. But Father, I praise you in advance. I thank you already in advance. I thank you, Lord, before any assignment and any lie and any curse, any spirit of deception tries to come, I smash that plan in Jesus' name. 
I plead the blood of Jesus against every false doctrine, every lie, every deception. I cancel it in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus upon myself, upon my wife, and all those that are connected to us. And I rebuke every spirit that tries to come and bring deception towards us. I stand upon your pure word, Father. And I reside under the covering of your blood. Ladies and gentlemen, a serial killer is loose in your neighborhood and you don't know. And if you don't know, you could be his next target. A serial killer means a person that continues to do these things. He's in your neighborhood. And you don't know if you are his next target. You know who that is. Since terror is related to the unknown, it has to do with the things your mind cannot see. Your mind cannot see. Your mind cannot identify the terror of this spirit which come from the Hittites. Terror is more emotional than mental. It's based more on what your emotions hear than on what your mind can see. This is a key now. Terror deals with your emotions. Your emotions come from your soul realm. We are made up of three parts, body, soul, and spirit. Each part is mindful of its own. The body is world consciousness. The soul is self-consciousness. The spirit is God consciousness. That's why a person who is not born again have not accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior are not God consciousness. So they just take life as it goes. They just operate according to the soul and the body. But the only way the body operates is through what's happening in the soul, the mind, the will, and emotions. Emotions cause you to act out of contents. You just begin to act because you are an emotional person. As a believer, you don't operate in your emotion. You neither operate in your mind. You operate in your spirit. Your spirit is the governor of your mind, will, and emotions. That controls your body. So when you're not supposed to go right and the Holy Spirit tells you don't go right. The Spirit of God downloads that to your, your mind and your emotions. Your mind and your emotions send that to the electrical panel of your body, and your body functions accordingly. This, is, this, is, this will help anyone that are dealing with these situations, not knowing you're dealing with an Hittite spirit. Always cause you to be emotion, emotional. I mean, uh, it's not wrong to be emotional, but to make decisions, wrong decisions, out of emotional feelings. That's where you can get into a lot of situations that you should abstain from. Uh, just give me about five, ten minutes and we'll be done. I'm not even halfway through. Your emotions happen to bear on the things that you hear than on what your mind can see because once you see it with your natural eyes, your mind begins to function and operate. Your emotions can easily move by what you hear. People gives you a sad story, a bad story, or they give you a happy story then you begin to get emotional, which is okay. But just don't make a decision out of your emotions. This is where you have to trust the Spirit of God. How do you trust the Spirit of God? Well, what does the Word of God say? I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. 
what things are there. If it's to glorify God, then it's to, in the will of God. If it's to glorify man, don't think about it. Don't move into that area. Terror, terrorists, terrorism. A manifestation of fear. A literal fear of an unknown happening. Watch this. One of the last keys I'll touch on and then close. It is a secrecy. A spirit of secrecy, secrets. Planned and carried out with the aim to create panic. and confusion among the unsuspecting party. Let me read this one more time. Terror, terrorists, terrorism, a manifestation of fear, a literal fear of an unknown happening. Here's the word, secrecy. It's planned and carried out with the, with the aim to create panic and confusion among the unsuspecting. Our minds prefer it when all is right with the world, when law and order is around, when we can count on something, when we know we can trust things to work for our well-being, our mind. But when fear comes along and attacks our mind, rationality goes out the window. Panic sets in. When panic and fear sets in, we start reacting to thing, things irrationally. This is exactly the type of ground that the Hittite spirit loves. The Hittite spirit wants you and I to run in a frantic mode or in a mode of panic. The best thing to happen to any person, especially a son of God or a born-again believer, is to be under complete control. Timothy 1.7, 1 Timothy 1.7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love. 2 Timothy 1.7, God has not given us the spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, love, and a calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. Wow. When we start acting irrationally, we need to remember and speak the word. When we start acting irrationally or out of control, you need to stop. And speak the word. God has not given me the spirit of fear. Psalms 27 1 The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I dread? The Lord is the refuge and stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Isaiah 35 5 Say to those who are of fearful and hasty heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, there is nothing to fear, for I am with you. Do not look around, you in terror, and be dismayed. For I am your God, I will strengthen and harden you 
to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of righteousness and justice. Hebrews 13, 6. So we take comfort and are encouraged and are confidently, boldly, and say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread or to be in terror, terrified. What can man do to me? These several script, scriptures that I gave you, you might want to write it down again. Psalms 27, 1. Isaiah 35, 5. Isaiah 41, 10. First one I gave you was 2 Timothy 1, 7. And then Hebrews 13, 6. I'll conclude with this. Got it? This evil spirit does not want you to remember these promises that God has given us in his word. There's many more, many more scriptures. Again, these evil spirits does not want you and I to confess and stand upon these promises. But this is where you have to confess it. So you can profess it. So you can possess it. So we have to confess it. To profess it. To possess it. One more time. We have to confess it. To profess it. To possess it. The more you begin to confess it, these spirits, these Hittite spirits, cannot attack your mind, cannot attack your emotions cannot attack your body, cannot even touch or come close to your spirit man because your spirit man has remained and is remained standing sure-footed and unmovable upon the power of God's word. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody let's give God the big, a, a big praise. Give him thanksgiving this morning. Can you please stand with me? Hallelujah. Somebody got some meat this morning. Hallelujah. Whenever we deal with crisis or the attacks of the enemy, know this for certain and for sure. You and I are not exempt of these things. Neither our family neither the body of Christ that is connected to you and I. I'll say this and I'll make a bold statement saying this. If any place you need to be, you need to be in the presence of the King. The King of Kings. Stop making excuses about the COVID this and the COVID that. Stop making excuses about where you should not be because we just saw you at the other place. You would rather deviate from God's plan on a place of deliverance of health and eternity rather than dealing at a place for your physical comfort In the presence, there is peace. In God's presence, there is liberty and joy. In God's presence, there is healing. In God's presence, there is comfort. God's presence, there is love and fellowship.
And if any place we need to be, it's to be in the presence of the King. Father, we honor you today. We thank you, Lord, for the manifestation of your word. We thank you, Father God, for deliverance, healing, and breakthrough. We thank you, dear God, for identifying these things that we may be aware and alert and cautious. And we reach out our faith to our families and those that have been on our program this morning. We cover them, every listener, with the blood of Jesus. We cover all of our loved ones and our families with the blood of Jesus. We pray, Father, that your angels go forth and begin to cover and watch over all of our loved ones and those that are connected and are allies with us. We stand upon your pure word. We give you all the glory. Father, if there's anyone out there, my friend, if there's any person there that want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, just say this simple prayer with me. Dear Lord, forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. Come into my heart. Be Lord and God over my life. From this day forward, give me that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Now can we all lift our hands, every person and those that are watching the telecast, and just say this simple prayer. Lord, I surrender to you. May your perfect will be done in and through my life. I give you all the glory, all the honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, Judy. You can help me with this song. Thank you, Lord. Just praise you. Thank you, Lord. Lord. worship the Father. Let's worship Him.
Thank you, Lord, for a fresh touch. Thank you for healing. Thank you for breakthrough among the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for breakthrough among all of our loved ones, our families and friends and workers and co-workers around our neighborhood, our community, our city. We continue, dear God, to claim this city for Jesus Christ. We continue to claim our families, Father God, from the, the, the ocean side to the mountain top as far as it can go covering this whole west side and leeward side and then throughout the rest of the islands we cover this place with the blood of jesus we declare there's an outpouring of god's spirit god's anointing god's promises and help us as vehicles dear god to confess profess and possess 
the word of God that brings deliverance, healing, and most of all, deliverance and salvation. We give you all the glory, all the honor, praise, and thanksgiving in the name above all names, at the name of Jesus and the body of Christ. Can help me by saying amen and amen. Give God a big cup offering. God bless you. You may be seated as we go to the final process. Lord, Ooh, what an awesome, awesome word. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Apostle. Right now we come to the time of tithes and offerings. I just have two scriptures that I'd like to share. One in the Old Testament in Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. One-tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain from the fields or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord and must be set apart to him as holy. Amen. The tithe is only a tenth. That's only a portion that God asks of us. Amen. It's holy. It's his. It belongs to him. Amen. And then in um, the New Testament, I wanted to share a scripture in 1 John. Chapter 2, verse 6. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. And the point that I want to share on this is Jesus was the most generous person that ever lived. Jesus gave up his heavenly home to live on this earth. He became flesh and he gave his life on the cross so that we could live. Amen. So if we say that we live in God, we, he's our father, we belong to him, then we should live our lives as Jesus did. We need to be generous. We need to be givers. We need to look for opportunities every day to be blessing, to be a blessing to someone else. Amen. So I just wanted to share that and that it's a privilege and an honor to be able to give tithes and offerings. Amen. And if I could, I just wanted to share really quick. Thank you all for praying for me and my family. I just got back from Washington, take my baby to school. But you know what I wanted to share is that God is faithful. And because we are tithers, I tell you, not as a brag, I'm not bragging, but God is so good. $250,000 of my son's tuition. And all of his, everything he needs is covered. And that's God. That's not us. It's not because of us. But I tell you, he's a good God. And I tell you, Apostle was sharing about uh, emotions inside of his. I'm an emotional person. I'm, sometimes I'm an emotional wreck. But you know what? I give my emotions to God. And I, and I thank God that when I went to the school there, I tell you, I stepped foot. I didn't even get to the school, and I was crying because of the beauty. Then I started walking around the place, and everywhere I went, I couldn't stop crying. And it's all because of God. And I tell you this, prove him. Prove him. I don't know if you know, Apostle, but Mother Pastor Ethel is the one that taught, taught us to tithe. And we were actually on a women's retreat in Maui. I was attending Jesus, the Bread of Life Church, but she shared with me on tithings. And ever since that day, I never stopped. Ne we never looked back. And I tell you what, take God at his word and he will pr prove himself to you. Amen. All right. Those that are bringing their tithes and, their, and your offerings, buckets will come around. Amen. I'm going to pray for the tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just want to thank you. Thank you for being Jehovah Jireh. Thank you for being our provider, Father God. Today, Lord Jesus, we confess your word, Father God, that you, Lord, as we bring our tithes, Father God, you will rebuke the devourer for our sakes, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, because you are truly faithful to your word, Father God. You are a good, good father. Your goodness and your mercy follows us all the days of our lives, Father God. And we praise you. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to, to give, Lord Jesus, so that 
your kingdom, your purpose can be fulfilled here on earth, Lord. We love you, Father God. We appreciate you, and we give you the highest praise. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. God is good, and all the time. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for another Sunday service. Remember that we do have midweek service every Wednesdays at 7 p.m., so make sure you tune in, like, and subscribe to it, too, so you guys can send your service. But at this time, I'm going to close us in a prayer, so if you guys go, bow your heads. Gracious me, Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning and keeping us safe. Thank you for blessing us with a powerful word today for watching over us throughout the rest of the day thank you for your head of protection throughout every one of us here lord your continuous favor and prosperity over each and every one of our lives you keep us safe giving us a blessed safe day in jesus name and everybody can help me by saying here at arc of safety christian fellowship Remember, if you're giving your tithes and offering, you can visit us at aoshawaii.com or text the word GIVE to 1-808-518-3793. God bless.